Hello everybody, this is Video Boy, and welcome to Archipelago Devlog number 42. So some of you are probably wondering where the update is, and I'll talk about that at the end of this video, so that the devlogs kind of flow properly, if uh, someone wants to watch them um, in a row. So uh, I'm going to start off uh, by just doing the normal devlog stuff. So before making this episode, I want to go check out the last episode to see what I added since then. And there's quite a few new things that I added that I want to show you guys, so let's get started. So in the last episode, as I said, I was going to add uh, the item system and the character editor, and I did. So as you can see, the character editor works, uh, but I'm still missing the art for it, but I can demonstrate it using some placeholder art here. Uh, so if I click on the buttons, I can change the color, and I can also click on the arrows to change the style, so you can have different hairstyles or different face styles. Um, and I can also click on the player to change his direction. Uh, and if you click play, you can go into the game and you'll have the character. Uh, you just have to make sure to set the name, of course. Um, and to get the system to work, I need to set up the item system in the game. So basically every player has an inventory and an equipped inventory that manages the items they have equipped. Um, so the item system took a little bit of time to implement, uh, but it's in the game now and there's actually a lot of really cool behind the scenes stuff that's going to make adding new things uh, a lot easier down the line. Um, and it's all saved in the database so your items and uh, uh, skin color and all that kind of stuff get saved onto your character. The item system works fairly well and as soon as I get some art I'll be able to test out using items. So things like weapons or potions, things like that. And I think it'll be really cool and uh, we'll finally be able to implement some combat. If you have been following me on Twitter, you probably saw me talking about the new login system. So basically when you register an account now, you're registering an account with Holobit. So this account can be used in all Holobit games, if more are added down the line of course. So I figured it'd be easier to do this way from the start. Um, so if ever we make new games or things like that down the line, we have the system set up and we don't have to like do some funny business. So you can register an account and it will require an email now. The email doesn't do anything right now, it's just being stored in the database. We're going to use it for password resetting, which is not implemented. Um, and I might make some sort of newsletter thing down the line for people who want it. Uh, but it's, it's really just mostly for password resetting if you forget your password or something. I'll also implement some sort of email validation. Uh, so it'll send you an email to confirm it's actually your email. This is all just for you guys, really, if you forget your password or and you need to reset it, um, you have a good secure system to do that that's uh, fairly bulletproof. Uh, so once you're logged in with the Holobit user account, you can pick a server. So right now, the only server that there's going to be is the Emerald server. So just click connect and you get connected. And then now you can go in the character picker menu and you can pick a character that you want to play as. You can create up to four characters at the moment, and we might add more in the future, it's not hard to do it. Um, we might even do some sort of thing where you can pay to get extra characters, or something like that. Uh, but four is a good number and I'm sure most people won't even use more than one. Um, I still have to implement character deleting, uh, but that shouldn't be too much of a problem, I'll do that for next week. I also wanted to talk a little bit about mobile device compatibility, so I added touchscreen controls to the game. So you have the D-pad and you have the buttons, and there's also a direction lock just like on the uh, the normal computer version. So basically it's the exact same controls except uh, you can play it on a mobile device. I tested it out on a couple of my Android devices and it seems to work fairly well and I think it's pretty good. Also, uh, I mentioned on Twitter, but I have access to a Mac computer now, so I'll be able to start testing iOS uh, compatibility very soon. And uh, well that brings us to the goals section, so for the next episode I plan on fixing some bugs and just overall making the game more bulletproof um, so people don't get the game crashing and stuff. I also want to implement NPC dialogues, so there will be NPCs walking around that you can talk to. And uh, I'm not too sure when the next devlog will be out, uh, but I've been working on the game a lot lately and I don't think it'll take too long to get the next one out. But it really depends on my school workload. And uh, yeah, that pretty much ends this episode. So thank you guys so much for watching. And uh, thank you for staying tuned till the end. 
And I'll talk a little bit about the update now. So the update was supposed to come out almost two months ago at this point. Uh, but we haven't really um, had the chance to release it. There's still quite a few bugs and stuff going on. And also uh, the artist, I kind of lost contact with him. And I think things are going on. The artist's work is really good, but we might have to get someone else. Uh, since we're pretty much just lost contact at this point. But yeah, we need to get the game going, and uh, I'm excited for, for the future. It's really starting to uh, advance now, and soon we're going to get something really playable. So I think you guys would be excited also, and uh, that's pretty much all. Thank you guys so much for watching, and uh, stick, stay tuned for the next episode. Goodbye.